Let's revise experiments in quantum physics. Finding Planck's constant using LEDs. There are several different circuits that we can use. Here I have a cell connected to a variable resistor and the purpose of the variable resistor will be to vary the PD across this LED. It is crucial that the LED is connected to positive to negative, otherwise current will not flow. You can also use a potentiometer arrangement or you can directly use a variable power supply in the lab to achieve the same results. Please note that in some questions I've also seen a tiny resistor added as part of the circuit to try and limit the current and to protect the LED. We're going to vary the resistance of the variable resistor and this in turn is going to vary the PD across the LED until it lights up. We're going to measure that precise voltage known as the threshold voltage across the LED just at the moment when it lights up. Another one of our measurements will be the wavelength of the LED. Now this is typically just given by the manufacturer and typically this is accepted by mark schemes. However, an additional way of doing that is to use the standard diffraction grating method to determine the wavelength. Then we're going to repeat this experiment for multiple LEDs. I'm just going to add of a different color slash different wavelength. Then we're going to plot a graph of the voltage against one over lambda and this is really important. Why one over lambda? Well, this is our equation. EV is equal to HC over lambda. On the left hand side, we have electrical energy that is being directly converted to photon energy. Rearranging as always for whatever is on the y axis, we get that V is HC over E times one over lambda. And if V is on the y axis, if one over lambda is on the x axis, this means that our gradient is going to be HC over E. Now our final step would be to rearrange for Planck's constant. So we'll just do that over here. So M is equal to HC over E. This of course means that H will be given by our gradient times the elementary charge divided by the speed of light. So many fundamental constants in this equation, I love it. Now to ensure accurate results in this experiment, we need to make sure that we perform this in a dark room or we can use an opaque tube to actually look into LED and block all the ambient light. On to the classic photoelectric effect, the experiment's explanation for which Einstein won his Nobel Prize. In a nutshell, the photoelectric effect occurs whenever a photon, a particle of light, strikes a metal surface and removes an electron. This is sometimes known as the photoelectron. If the energy of the photon is greater than the work function, an electron is emitted. And remember, the work function is the minimum energy of a photon required to release an electron from the surface of a metal. If the energy is below the work function, there is no emission. And here is something that many people do not fully understand. And let me just explain this as best as I can. How does the photoelectric effect prove the particle nature of light? How does it prove that this here is a particle? First of all, the emission does not depend on the intensity, but only of the frequency of the light. Now, intensity is simply the number of photons. If the light is very intense, that means that there's going to be more photons. But if we were to use visible light, then let's just say that this here was a visible photon, um, then absolutely no photoelectrons would be emitted from the surface of the metal because the energy of the visible light is below the work function. Because it does not depend on intensity, it doesn't really matter whether we had one or a thousand of these visible light photons, still no electron will be emitted because there is a one-to-one -one interaction between a photon and an electron. So the emission does not depend on the intensity, but only on the frequency of the light, 
i.e. the energy of the photon. And the next part is crucial to the explanation of the particle nature of light. The emission is almost instantaneous, whereas in classical theory it should take longer. You can actually calculate it, it should take a few minutes, but the energy arrives in packets proving that light is indeed proving that light indeed has particle properties. The equation for the photoelectric effect is that the energy of the photon, either hf or hc over lambda, is equal to phi plus k max. Sometimes in experimental questions you come across this graph with, kine with maximum kinetic energy on the y-axis against frequency on the x-axis. Couple of features. First of all, this here is our threshold frequency. Why is it our threshold frequency? Well, because above that you actually start to get some electrons being emitted with some maximum kinetic energy. Well, if I have k max on the y-axis against frequency on the x-axis, I can rearrange Einstein's equation for it. What I get is that k max is equal to hf, take away the work function. If this is on the y-axis, if f is on the x-axis, this means that our gradient m is equal to Planck's constant and our intercept c is actually the negative of the work function. We can actually see there's going to be a negative number here, meaning that the work function will be positive. Another explanation question that I've seen come up in exams is why is the work function a minimum? Or it can also be phrased as why is the kinetic energy a maximum in this equation? Well, first of all, if phi is a minimum, kinetic energy has to be a maximum as they both add up to the fixed energy of the photon. However, in practice, phi the work function is a minimum because most electrons actually require more energy than the work function and this will be enough to score you full marks in A-level physics typically. However, to really understand this, you can also think about the actual position of the electrons. So some of them may be in different energy levels. And let's say the very, very surface ones might require the work function. If they're in a different position, a different energy level, they might require more energy uh, for the electrons to be emitted. The classic experiment which proves the photoelectric effect is the gold leaf electroscope. We introduce some charge to this electroscope. This could be done by charging up a rod and making some contact or it could be done with an electrical circuit. What then happens is that this gold leaf will rise because it will acquire a negative charge and this part here has a negative charge so they experience electrical force. If we were to shine some visible light onto this arrangement the gold leaf will not drop even at some really high intensities. That is because the energy of the photons of the visible light is less than the work function. Also answer this in terms of threshold frequency. And just remember that the work function is just given by energy, so this here will be equal to H Planck's constant multiplied by the threshold frequency. However, if we were to apply UV light directly above this, the gold leaf will drop pretty quickly as electrons are emitted because the energy of the UV photon is greater than the work function. Alternatively, the frequency of UV light or the photons of UV light is greater than the threshold frequency. If we were to increase the intensity of the UV light, in practice all this means is that if we had a UV source, all we did that is we bring that closer, meaning that more UV photons will strike this surface and if more UV photons strike this surface, this means that electrons will be emitted and the gold leaf will drop faster. Another thing that I've seen sometimes in experiments is the use of glass. Now glass tends to absorb most of the UV ray radiation and if we have a piece of glass placed here then that typically means that the gold leaf will not drop. One final experimental arrangement that we're going to revise is the arrangement uh, used to demonstrate wave particle duality. Remember the de Broglie wavelength of a particle is given by 
h over p, where h is Planck's constant, and p is the momentum of a particle. Now, I can accelerate electrons with a really high voltage of around a few thousand volts. In my lab, we have one which is around 5,000 volts. We accelerate them straight at a thin polycrystalline graphite sheet. When the electrons pass through the thin crystal, the spacing between the atoms is approximately equal to the de Broglie wavelength, meaning that electron diffraction actually occurs. And this electron diffraction is shown via concentric rings that you can see in this arrangement. Well done for revising quite a lot of quantum physics. If you found this video useful, you absolutely need to check out my video on experiments on electromagnetism, which will really help you boost up your grade. This video is right over here.